question or you have concerns about, please send it through me. I will get it to upper management. Uh, my email is david.stokesoracle.com. Uh, Twitter handle is Stoker. If you go through past slides um, or past tweets, uh, a year and a half ago there was a Nicole Kidman movie called Stoker, and there was a very interesting Twitter uh, time for my life. Oh, that doesn't say Twitter, does it? Yeah. Uh, so if you go back and there's stuff about red hair and nudity, it's not me this time. Uh, slides are up at slideshare.net, David M. Stokes. I'll be talking about some Oracle products that aren't officially published yet. So on anything on those, uh, please take them with a grain of salt. Uh, MySQL is now 20 years old. Uh, for those of you who have gray hair, you probably remember MySQL when it came out 20 years ago. I sure do. Uh, but the big question is, what have we done for you lately? Well, sometime in the next couple of weeks, MySQL 5.7 will come out. If you want to know everything about MySQL 5.7, uh, we have over 150 new features, and you can read the list, the complete list of features. Uh, the big thing for a lot of folks is a native JSON data type. We're getting a lot of good reaction off that. Uh, group replication. Uh, we've improved replication, so it's parallel replication all through, all down to the database level. Uh, we do a secure by default install, which means if you throw something up in the cloud, you don't have to worry about the script kitties getting it before you do, and GIS support. Uh, something you'll probably want to take a look at, uh, come out right after 5 seconds release is our new group replication, right to one master, it updates other masters. For years we've had people doing multi-master very badly, so we're trying to take care of that for you. So today I'm talking about the MySQL utilities. By the way, we're looking for Python coders, so if you have a resume and you're hot to go, let me know. 85% uh, of the MySQLers work from their home, so if you want the commute where you have to turn left at the cat and go past the ottoman to get to your working environment, let me know. Uh, the gentleman who's in charge of all our Python coding is a guy out of Virginia named Dr. Chuck Bell, and the stuff that he and his crew have come up with, I hope you'll be impressed with. Uh, you can get the utilities as a download from that address. Uh, latest is version 1.5. Uh, what are they? Well, we had a lot of little uh, scripts out there that people had written themselves that were pretty bad. And they're also using things like Percona Toolkit and using it badly. So we decided to come up with a set of utilities written in Python uh, that would take care of most of the common tasks that people have to do. We're trying to make things simple for you. Uh, prerequisites uh, were Python 2.6, uh, the later versions we're working on. Some big gaps there, as you all know. Uh, we also want you to use our connector, not the general connector. Uh, new release came out on Thursday, I believe. Simple to install. Unzip, run the setup. Or if you're on the other platforms, um, use your RPMs or Debian packages or DMGs. Uh, also out there for Windows, for those of you who are stuck on Windows world. Overview, they're in five groups. Uh, we have things like MySQL DB Compare, so if you need to do a diff between two databases, uh, easy to do. Uh, one for copying, that's real easy. Uh, export it, we'll throw your data, serialize it, and put it out there in any format you want, just about. Uh, one for disk usage, uh, FRM files. If you've had ever had a bad FRM file in a MySQL database, uh, this is a lifesaver. Uh, we're trying to move away from the FRM files. That's a legacy thing from about 20 years ago that really didn't quite work out. Uh, index check, uh, very interesting. If, if you know your indexes, they require maintenance and overhead. And if you have redundant indexes, you want to get rid of them. This will help you do that. Um, user clone, real interesting if you're have a dev environment and you have something that's not working in production, copy over the user that's working in, in uh, dev and see what's going on and see what the differences are. Uh, high availability, you can actually set it up so that you can have automatic failover. Say, okay, this, this box over here is the master, these boxes are gonna be copies of the master, uh, automatically set up replication, and if the master goes away, one of the slaves will be automatically promoted. Uh, server clone. I like this because if you need to throw in a new, a new copy for 
replication, it's easy to do. Server info gives you all the, the documentation you need on an instance. It's kind of interesting to run because you'll be surprised how wide in a long running uh, server farm how things vary. Uh, these two, audit admin and audit grep, if you're a support customer, you have our audit tools support and availability. Uh, most of you are running the community version, won't be interested in this. Here's an example of DB copy. Uh, basically, uh, do source machine, destination machine, and away you go. Real fast, real simple. Uh, process grep, I like this. Uh, you have something that your boss runs on Friday afternoons when you're trying to get stuff out the door and he's running his fantasy football league. You can search for it and kill it off automatically. Uh, the bottom one is killing anything that's been running for more than an hour. Um, before you run that the first time with a kill, do it with something that reports what's going on. Put it out there to a log or cat it out to a file. REPL check. Um, replication is fairly easy to set up in MySQL, especially with 5.6 and 5.7. But if you want to make sure everything's as kosher as it can be, uh, please run this utility. Uh, same with server clone. It's real funny how everyone's throwing stuff up in the cloud these days, but they don't do a good copy of what they're trying to get out there for the cloud. Uh, great way to do it. Fabric. Uh, Fabric isn't part of the utilities. It's closely linked to the utilities, also written in, in Python. The idea is you could set up high availability groups with automatic failover, or you can set up sharding groups with failover, and the smarts are all in the connector. Now, right now, we only have three connectors, including the Python connector, that are smart enough to support Fabric. Uh, Python is one of those. And the idea for Fabric came from talking to Facebook two and a half years ago. The thing that kills them is when they have to reshard their data. Fabric sharding application lets you reshard on the fly. The smarts in the connector, not in the actual application. So if you need to split your stuff three ways instead of two ways, it's easy to tell Fabric go out and divvy it up the way you want, and if you need to change it back, you can do it on the fly. Uh, this is an example of two high availability groups. Uh, your application talks to a fabric controller one time to figure out where the various pieces are. Uh, something goes wrong, it will double check with that. But if you need to change anything down at this level, you're not affecting anything at the application level. MySQL Router, we just uh, publicly announced this. This is written for the folks like the PHP coders who can't take advantage of Fabric because the Fabric uh, aware connector isn't ready yet. Uh, this way you can split traffic, um, you can do load balancing, you can do static route routing. Uh, we also have other tools that will let you rewrite queries on the fly, so if you know if certain programmers are writing bad queries and you know what they are, you can catch them. Uh, this will probably be our main attack against Galera for those of you who are Galera fans. Also something I'd like to uh, promote to you is MySQL Workbench. This is our second most popular download. Uh, it has a hook into it to the utility, so when you download Workbench, you also get the utilities, and there's a little shell in there, and it lets you have access to it. Um, if you've ever had to optimize a query in MySQL, and you've seen the old tabular explain, this is a new visual version that gives you uh, better clues of what's going on. By the way, if you mouse over that red box, it will tell you that you have a full table scan there and give you hints on how to fix that. Uh, Workbench is kind of a Swiss Army tool. Uh, it lets you do all sorts of things like set up users, copy users, do backups. It now comes with a dashboard so you can find out what's going on, give you an overview of what's going out there. We also have bundled in with 5.7 and available for 5.6, the Sys schema. This is a set of uh, views, uh, stored routines, and other procedures that answer the common questions that most DBAs run into. Who's hogging my I.O.? Which queries are problematic? Uh, which queries are running without indexes? Which indexes aren't being used? Uh, who's hogging the temp space? Who's doing all that sort of stuff? Uh, we had a lot of the raw tools available since 5.5, but really no good way for Joe average person to go out there and figure out what's going on. So that's why we came up with the Sys schema. Also, it's something that's really exciting with, with Workbench, Entity Relationship Mapper. 
I go to a customer site and they say, we got this database, we have no idea what it does, can you help us out? First thing I do is I run the entity relationship mapper and print this out, and it shows the relationships between the various tables out there, where the various keys link up and all that. Uh, it's also a migration tool and does about 20 other things. The second most popular free download, if you're not running it and you have any sort of DBA type activities you have to do, please get a copy of this, it's a lifesaver. Well, believe it or not, that was my very short presentation on this. I was hoping to have some more time for Q&A. So I know it's the last day of a conference and you're all tired, but someone must have a question out there. Yes, sir. Oh. Woo, one in a row. Um, everything I mentioned except for the stuff for the audit log are for the community version of MySQL. Um, we're trying to make a bigger, badder MySQL, uh, more connections per second, better throughput, uh, better replication, more solid. And I know at an audience like this, there might be one support customer in here. And that one support customer, there's about a 40% chance they're going to run the community version anyway. So. Yeah. Yeah. And you can, it can be used for documentation. Used for documentation. Exactly what we're yeah, I, I love printing these out because people have no idea what their schemas actually look like and yeah. how their data works out. Um, free, if you want to see a demo of it afterwards, let me know. Pardon? Um, this is part of reverse engineering. So someone hands you a, an application and you have to look at the database and you look at it and there's things in there that are company standards that you need to change. Like their email addresses are 30 characters long and your company can't standard is 60. You can reverse engineer what they have, roll it back out and away you go. Oops. Here, let me hit him first. Yes, sir. Make it easy. Yeah. Um, what are the advantages Uh, storing native JSON allows you to have, has to, it's made sure that it's a valid document before it gets shoved into that column, that JSON column. We do some smart indexing in there so that you can pull the stuff up quickly. Uh, so that's a little more efficient storage. Now if you're going to index a field from the JSON column, we use generated columns to extract that one column and run a normal MySQL uh, index build off that. Uh, what's real scary is I was at a show two months ago in New York we just announced the JSON data type. I said, this is release candidate, not generally available. This one guy took all the real estate listings he had for the state of New Jersey, moved it off Mongo into that, uh, gave me a minor heart attack. But it's been working great for him for, for several months now. So uh, if you're in the JSON, that's something there. Um, so how do you modify that? Uh-huh. Uh, you mean how fast 5.7 is coming out or how fast? Uh, 5.7 should be announced. Um, big secret, MySQL world, there's two shows where we announce stuff. One's the Percona show in April. The other one's the Oracle Open World show in October. And we tend to do things the week before so then we get caught up in the thing. So most likely, I'd say at least a week before Open World. So sometime in the next three and a half weeks. Yes, ma'am. Um, yeah, especially if you're in the JSON world, I'd say wait three weeks. But if you want to try it out, we have release candidates available right now. And there's not going to be a lot of big differences between what we have in the release candidate and the final candidate right now. Yes, sir. Woo. Uh, Uh, you want to link two databases together? Um, uh, something that Oracle would implement to kind of replace the federated storage engine. Um, that's going to be part of the router project. Um, doing something like Rack isn't really in our charter. Um, to link up two different tables. Um, 
right now we, we'd, our, our recommendation would be use the, um, the router project. Uh, if you're running an old version of MySQL, like 5.1, and you really like Federated, let me know. We went away from that because a lot of people didn't find it too popular. Uh, one of our competitors came up with an engine that kind of does what Federated does, and I can talk to you about that. Um, something we're going to do in 5.8 is have a data dictionary, which will make it easier to span two different databases and pull everything together. Boy, you're a quiet group. For, for Must have been the game last night. You, you want to replicate from the big database with secret information down to another one without the secret information? Um, yeah, you don't have to copy everything down. Um, if you can keep the secret information to a table, that's better. Uh, if you have stuff within a table, you're probably going to have to do that at the application level. Um, are you just scrubbing it or encrypting it or just scrubbing it? Yeah, there, there are about three or four different ways to do that depending on how... But if you have it, all the encrypted stuff, or I mean all the secure stuff in one separate table, just don't replicate that table over. Works better. Now I can get a reaction from you all. How many were upset at the Texas Tech game last night? Uh, one, one, yeah. How many liked the Aggie game last night? Okay. Uh, I'm married to someone from Texas Tech, and I went to a school out in California, so I had no idea about college football in Texas until I moved here 20 years ago. And, oh, it is a religion. Well, um, I can do demos afterwards. Um, you have my contact information. And if you want one of these, uh, please let me know. We've got a couple of minutes for the next talker. Anyone want one of these that didn't get one? Don't take one. GIS stuff looks interesting. Uh, we've been working with Boost Geometry on the GIS stuff. On. No problem. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. There you go. Why a dolphin? Why a dolphin? Um, we had a contest years ago for a mascot, and we decided to go with a dolphin. Mark, you on? Anyone else want one that's right here? And then anyway, after we had the dolphin, we had a contest to name it Sakilo, which is a, a Swahili word for community, I believe. Okay, folks, I'm down to the last two. Well, thank you all. I hope the rest of your conference goes great. If you need me, please contact me at that address. <laughs>